Today we're going to be talking about changes in matter. We've mentioned before that matter can be changed in a variety of ways, and that's what we're going to look at today, but it's important to understand a scientific law called the Law of Conservation of Matter and Energy. And basically, all this law tells us is that the amount of matter and the amount of energy in the universe is constant. We can do chemical reactions, we can make changes to matter, but whatever we do, we're not actually destroying existing matter, and we're not creating new matter. We can rearrange it, we can make it look different, we can change it from a solid to a liquid to a gas, but that amount of matter is constant and is still there, even though we can't always see it. When matter is changed, we can classify it as being either a physical change or a chemical change. Physical changes basically mean that we can change the appearance of something or change the state of it or change it a little bit without actually creating a new substance. For instance, if I take a bottle of water, I can place this water in the freezer and after a couple hours it may come out as a block of ice. It's different than it was when it went in, but on the molecular level we still have water molecules. They've just changed state from being a liquid to being a solid. So that's an example of a physical change. We haven't created a new substance. We've only made it a little bit different than it was before, but still the same molecular substance. Some other examples of physical changes would include crushing a can. We change its appearance, we change its shape, but it's still that aluminum can that we started with. Melting an ice cube is again another example of a change of state. We take in that case solid water, add some heat to it, and change it back into a liquid. Boiling water is another state change where in this case we're changing water from a liquid to a gas, but it remains water molecules. It just goes from being water in a pot on the stove to water vapor in the air. Mixing sand and water is combining two things that don't react chemically with each other and could easily be separated again, either by filtration or by evaporating the water out. Breaking a glass, if we take a glass vase or glass bottle and drop it on the floor, it may break into pieces that we might not even be able to put back together. But those pieces are still glass. Shredding paper, cutting up paper is another example of just changing the shape of something, changing the size of the pieces, but not chemically altering it. Even things like chopping a block of wood would be an example of a physical change, as well as mixing two different colored marbles or mixing any substances that don't actually chemically react with one another. On the other hand, when we talk about chemical change, we're talking about some sort of process that actually will change a substance into a new substance on the molecular level. Chemical changes take place when the bonds that hold molecules together, that actually hold the individual atoms together, are broken apart and those atoms bond together differently to form new substances. One example of chemical changes is just burning a fire. If I take a piece of wood or take a piece of paper and set it on fire and burn it, we'll see smoke coming up and we'll be left with ashes once the burning's complete. So we take our paper, we take our wood, and actually change it into carbon and carbon monoxide, these gases that are released through the smoke. So we're actually forming these new substances from the existing matter that was our piece of wood. Other examples of chemical change include rusting iron, which is that process of oxidation that we've talked about earlier, where the iron is actually combining with oxygen in the air. Burning wood, as we mentioned, is also a chemical change. Even things like baking a cake, where we take ingredients, mix them together, add heat, and they form a new substance that we can't revert back into our original materials. Exploding fireworks, that's happening through chemical reaction that actually adds heat and creates that burst of light and color, and that's happening because of chemical changes as the firework burns. Baking soda and vinegar react together to release gases as well as form sodium acetate, and even things like rotting fruit. You know, we can take a banana, sit it out on the counter, and as it turns brown, its color change is actually happening because of chemical changes within the, within the banana. So it's very important to understand when we see matter being changed, 
we should be able to identify is this a physical change or is this a chemical change based on is this reversible, do we have the same material we started with, or is a new substance being formed in this process.